I would like to begin this episode with a moment of silence for the lives of the following people, all members of the transgender and gender non-conforming community. Nina Pop, Monica Diamond, Tony McDade, Dominique Remier Fells, Rhea Milton, and Brayla Stone. The American Medical Association has declared an epidemic of violence against transgender people. Included among this demographic are black trans women. 91% of those killed in acts of violence were black women. 81% were under the age of 30. And 68% lived in the South. But the violence against black trans women is not just a conversation about police brutality. It is also one about sex work intimate partner violence, economic and housing stability, the prison industrial complex, health care, and the immigration system. Police violence and incarceration. Transgender people are routinely over-policed thanks to outdated legislation that targets trans people, as well as the typical instances of systemic racism that prevail in law enforcement including the criminalization of poverty, the over-policing of neighborhoods of color, etc. You may have heard of the trans panic defense, where a person can claim that they were coerced into sex with a trans person without knowing about their genitalia, and had such a strong reaction to finding out that they assaulted, beat, or murdered them. This is appalling behavior, and unfortunately, it has been a normal defense argument used in courtrooms across America. The homosexual panic argument follows similarly. One solution to this is an argument everyone twists into a strange picture because they simply don't understand it. Defunding or abolishing the police and divesting those funds specifically towards helping vulnerable populaces. After abolition, we must focus on decarceration and ending the prison industrial complex. Trans women are often placed in men's prisons where they are 13 times more likely to be sexually assaulted than cisgender people in prison. Rape is extremely common in prisons, and trans women, being women and femme presenting, yet potentially pre-op or pre-hormones, can still be read as masculine. This puts them in a uniquely bad state to be taken advantage of, both as a woman and both as a queer person. Please forgive my use of the slur. Here are some ways you can help. Providing resources or funds to Black and Pink, which aims to help incarcerated LGBTQAI people. Provide legal resources by donating and volunteering to or at the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Bail trans people out of jail via the National Bailout Fund. Sign a petition demanding justice for trans people, especially Black trans people. Please also remember that trans men are just as vulnerable to exploitation as trans women. Transgender Law Center has collected policies related to the treatment of incarcerated transgender and gender nonconforming people from every state prison in the U.S. These policies address everything from placement to access to transition-related healthcare and gender-affirming clothes and property to sexual violence prevention, response, and grievance. Visibility in the movement and movement leaders. Black trans women are often victims and survivors of events that can be thought of as intersectional violence. Black trans women are often neglected in civil rights movements, even though they have been at the center of LGBT rights and racial justice and advocacy for years. Feminist iconography, advocacy, and leadership often revolved around cisgender women, their genitalia, and reproduction. Cis feminists can sometimes fetishize having a vagina or having breast, which alienates trans women, especially pre-op trans women, from participation. The vast majority of corporate pride donations go to white-led LGBTQ plus organizations. Black trans women are not leaders of any major organizations. This level of systemic neglect starts at the top, and we as consumers need to encourage corporations 
celebrities, and our peers to donate directly to Black-led LGBTQ movements and organizations. Please support Black-led LGBTQ plus organizations. I will leave a link in the description if you would like to make a bulk donation, and I will also leave a link to a list of Black-led LGBT projects. Economic and Housing Stability Many trans people are criminalized for homelessness, poverty, inability to pay bills, and denied housing altogether. We must help to secure them jobs and housing all over the country. Please donate to Glitz, who is currently fundraising to buy houses for recently incarcerated trans folks. Please also donate to the House of Gigi, the Transgender District, and the Okra Project for Greater Food Stability. Also support the Homeless Black Trans Women Fund and, if you are based in New York City, Princess Janae's Place. Your workplace is a great place to start when trying to organize for black lives and transgender rights. Make sure your POC and trans coworkers have enough resources to eat, sleep, and stay warm. Although it is now illegal for trans people to be discriminated against in the workplace, this does not mean covert biases and prejudices do not occur. If you see something, say something if it is safe to do so. Immigration. Multiple trans women have been reported dead while in ICE custody. According to the Center for American Progress, ICE detains trans women in 17 facilities and four are in all male facilities. Trans women were detained more than twice the average length of an immigrant's detainment. This is most likely due to systemic discrimination. Immigration organizations need funding, legal volunteers, and people to make themselves available for demonstrations. Please donate to and subscribe to Familia, which is devoted to immigration justice for queer and trans folks. Please also support the Transgender Law Center and Races, who aid in the assistance of trans migrants. The Transgender Law Center also runs the Black LGBTQAI Plus Migrant Project. Sex work. Sex workers have usually been marginalized by non-sex workers in every sense of the word, despite the fact that trans sex workers like Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson are largely credited with starting the first Pride. Many trans people find work as sex workers due to limited job offerings and the compounding stereotypes of trans women doing porn making its way into our social picture of trans people. One in ten trans people will have performed sex work at some point in their lives or be coerced into it. Black respondents had the highest rate of sex trade participation overall. An overwhelming majority of sex workers also reported workplace discrimination, and current unemployment rates were dramatically higher for those who reported involvement in sex work. Sex work is work, and sex workers deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. In order to get there, we must work to decriminalize sex trade-related offenses, decarcerate people arrested on sex trade offenses, and destigmatize the sex trade so that workers have access to housing, education, employment, healthcare, and other basic needs. Help to stop SESTA and FOSTA, which outlined online communities of sex workers, thus making it even more unsafe for them by forcing many of them to take their work back to the streets. Please also support the New York Transgender Advocacy Group, a trans-led organization that advocates for more inclusive gender-based policies that benefit trans and gender non-conforming individuals through building community leaders, educating practitioners, and influencing policymakers. Finally, please donate to Urban Justice Center Sex Worker Project to provide more on-the-ground resources for trans women. Intimate Partner Violence Between 31% and 50% of trans people have experienced dating violence at some point in their lives. 
many such cases of assault, stalking, robbery, murder, etc. come as a result of intimate partner violence. The name itself was changed from domestic violence because people are not always living together in a domestic partnership or as part of a family unit when the abuse occurs. U.S. laws continue to portray trans people as predators or disingenuous. See the trans panic excuse that I mentioned before. To help, please support any LGBTQ plus organizations that offer shelter or refuge for people in need. I will leave a link in the description if you need to find a shelter near you. The Anti-Violence Project empowers LGBTQ and HIV-affected communities and allies to end all forms of violence through organizing and education and supports survivors through counseling and advocacy. Healthcare. As we continue the fight for universal health care and, furthermore, to see health care as a human right, we need to include gender-affirming care in the fight. Many states' Medicaid programs actually exclude transition-related health care. The Trump administration tried, and failed, to pass a law wherein said law removed protection for trans patients vis-a-vis discrimination by doctors, hospitals, and health insurance companies. Please donate to GoFundMes by trans women of color who are seeking fundraising for facial feminization surgery and other transition-related surgeries. I will link a guide to understanding your rights for acquiring health care as a trans or gender non-conforming person in the description. In addition, please donate to your local LGBTQ centers and hospitals. And finally, make a sustained or one-time donation, depending on your ability to pay, to Planned Parenthood, which continues to support gender-affirming and affordable care for all. Media While it is vital to give more attention overall to the movement for Black Lives, it is paramount that we, as allies of Black trans individuals, hold major institutions accountable for not covering the deaths of Black trans women, men, and non-binary people. Newspapers, television hosts, journalists, and police often insist on using the deceased person's dead name, which, if you don't know, is the name assigned to them at birth rather than their chosen name. This is transphobia at its core, and it delegitimizes the identity of trans individuals everywhere. It should not be happening at a respectable business, especially big name ones. As such, please support Black Trans Media and use hashtags of names of trans women to bring attention to them, only sharing media sources that respectfully eulogize them if they are deceased. Finally, I will leave in the description links and titles of books, articles, TV and movies, videos, podcasts, and more for you to watch, read, and learn from if you would like to learn more about how to support black trans people. For all my transgender brothers, sisters, and those who do not fall within the gender binary, please stay well and please try to keep smiling despite all the difficulties that you face. This has been Fina with Reveal in Light, and this was To the Sun, Episode 3. Thank you for listening and have a good day.